Hi, it's Deborah Peters for The Deborah Peters Show, and this is episode seven. Thank you so much, Eric, for your request that the topic be about how to bypass your negative self-talk. I think um, he actually called it your monkey mind and um, your bully mind or something like that. So thank you so much for sending in that request. Hey, it's my pleasure. It's absolutely my pleasure because that's my specialty. Hey, Bobby, thanks for joining us. You know, it's been over 20 some years for me. It kind of dates me, but that's okay. Um, that I've been studying neuroscience and mindset. And I want to tell you how it started out. So I uh, was always into fitness and um, was really looking for a direction in my life. And what did I want to do that was going to um, empower me and create an income for me and be something that I really enjoyed? So I took over a fitness studio. It was actually an aerobic studio, and I built it into this really cool fitness club. We trained bodybuilders and professional hockey players. Um, we ran bodybuilding competitions, powerlifting meets, got the contract for the local police department, the fire department, the local rugby team that was semi-pro. There was a lot going on there. And you know what I learned was it really was all about the mindset. You know, when you're working with professional athletes and it really comes down to like that nanosecond, whether you win or you don't, it really has everything to do with the mindset with all things being equal on a physical level. It's about the emotional strength. It's about the mental thought process and it's about the connection that that person has between their desired outcome and their ability to execute. So I got into neuroscience really heavily and became a career. And as coaching has morphed over the years and there's all of these different opportunities in a broad spectrum of industries across the world to do business coaching, life coaching, success coaching, health coaching, um, hey, Eric, thanks for joining us. You know, it's, this, is, this is my love. I love what I do. So the question was, how do I get past my negative self-talk? How do I get past sort of like that little, you know, monkey mind in the back? Hi, Daryl. Um, I miss your spin classes, honey. <laughs> Big time. Um, so how do you get past the negative self-talk? Well, first of all, let's talk about what that really means, right? Negative self-talk is, is a program. It's, it's a pattern. And it gets instilled in us through experiences. We're multi-sensory beings. As a human being, we're a multi-sensory being. So we experience life through our senses. We hear things, we see things. We smell things, we taste things, um, we intuit things. You know, we have multi senses that are taking in life experience and trying to make sense of that life experience. And then we file that life experience into deletions, distortions, and generalizations. What happens is, let's say we have a pretty significant emotional event that um, significance actually impacts our nervous system or our neurology. And then it creates what could be considered a trigger. It's actually like a neural, neural pathway, but for layman's terms, let's call it a trigger. Hi, Clement, um, my UK actor buddy living in Los Angeles. Good to see you. So we have these patterns that get built up because once that trigger is created or once that neural pathway is created, then other things, other experiences can happen in our lives that actually trigger that same feeling or that same thought. And when it's a feeling, it's always stronger than when it's a thought. So when it's a kinesthetic and it's something that we feel, it lights up our nervous system. Well, the more we um, experience that feeling and we rerun that process, then um, the more ingrained that pattern becomes in us. Hey, Mark, nice to see you. 
when we have a negative pattern, it can get triggered by any kind of external experience in life, not just an internal experience. So songs we hear, phrases, sometimes it's a tone of voice. I remember as I was going through some really deep personal development growth, I, um, I had some really traumatic experiences as a child my, my, with my mom and I could hear my mom's voice screaming in my head. And you know, she hadn't behaved like that for a long, long time, probably decades, but that was still kind of playing in the back of my head. So these kinds of patterns can become ingrained in us and then they become the pattern that we repeat unconsciously. Hey Kurt, good to see you. Um, once these patterns become ingrained unconsciously, we get triggered and we don't even realize we're being triggered. And this is what causes people to go off, you know, road rage, different, different unexplainable behaviors. It's like they'll, they'll perceive something a certain way and then they'll behave a certain way based on that perception. And we're kind of looking at them going like, what's up with you? You know, it wasn't that serious. It's because they've got some bandwidth built up on triggers that become patterns that function kind of on their own. So for all of us, and you know, it's not just me, it's all of us, we all have negative self-talk. And that negative self-talk kind of runs away with most of us, right? When you're not very self-aware, you don't realize it's it's your patterns that are doing the thinking for you and you actually believe that whatever you're thinking is is a real problem when it may not be a real problem at all that might have been a problem from a decade ago or from years ago and but you've convinced yourself that it's real right hey david thanks for joining us so I want to give you some tools to be able to, first of all, uh, get to observe and understand what's really going on with your thinking process. One of my favorite bumper stickers is never believe everything you think. And it's so true because a lot of the thought process that we have, I think the percentage is something like 77% of our thought processes are actually negative. And those come from teachings that look you know i'm a parent i think most of you people that are on here are parents hey john um we do the best we can with the resources we have and that old statement of there's no manual for being a parent well there kind of is it's actually an unconscious manual it's stuff we're taught by our parents parenting us that we then replicate and duplicate and perpetuate in our lives. So, you know, the saying, um, hurt people, hurt people. Like, let's look at this whole me too thing that's going on. You know, I've, I've got a childhood of me too's. And the cool thing for me is I made a conscious decision not to repeat that lifestyle, not to repeat that belief system, not to repeat that low self-esteem. And it's probably why I became a coach. I was looking for tools to have a better relationship with myself. Hey, Shane from Canada. Love you. So it's really about, first of all, observing what's going on. You need to become a good observer of how you function on the inside. And once you become that observer, then you begin, you can begin to make adjustments. I'm not gonna call them corrections because then it's an implication that there's something wrong with you. Hey, Jose, nice to have you join us. And you know, I'm here to tell you there is nothing wrong with you, okay? You are just fine the way you are. Can you improve yourself? Absolutely. And that is the process of life. And, you know, if there's any beef that I have with the coaching industry, it's this. Entire industry, the entire industry, multi-million dollar programs have been built off of telling people 
there's something wrong with them and my program is going to fix you. And it's like, no, first of all, there's nothing wrong with you. Okay. You're just fine. It all, you're a work in progress. All right. And when you make the choice, and sometimes that choice is at, in 10 second increments. I live my life in 10 second increments. So when you make the choice every 10 seconds to feel better about yourself, to talk to yourself nicer, to give yourself experiences that are going to make you happy. And I'm not talking about retail therapy. I'm talking about going for a walk in the sunshine. I'm talking about calling a friend or texting a friend and saying, hey, you know, I care about you. How's your day going? Just the little intangible things about life that don't cost any money, right? Hey, Timothy, glad to have you be a part of us. So the other thing I want to tell you about these patterns is that it's, it's a repetition. So the more repetition, the deeper ingrained the pattern becomes. So the repetitions work like this. It's three, seven, or 21 repetitions to either break or install a new pattern or habit. Now, that's where the saying, it takes 21 days to create a new habit came from, but it's actually an erroneous saying because it isn't necessarily 21 days. It could be 21 repetitions. It really depends on how much you're willing to immerse yourself in the process of repatterning yourself. And you guys all have the ability to repattern yourself, okay? You don't have to go to someone for repatterning. However, you do need to learn the tools to repattern, okay? So once you get those tools, then the choice is really yours. Now, what's really cool is that, you know, from a parenting perspective, um, my parents did amazing comparing compared to what they came out of right and so then i decided to up level that and this is the these are the choices that we have all the time every single day so you don't have to go all day long and feel bad you can actually start to feel good right now and maybe that's getting outside taking a deep breath having a stretch break um get off the caffeine quit smoking you know lay off the booze Stop watching the news. These are the kinds of things that will hijack your thought process because you'll actually start to get sucked into this downward spiral of lack, limitation, anger, resentment, and then it builds up inside of you and you become like a hostage of it. So, say, you know, Renee, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Kiko, love you too, babe. Um, so I think you're all getting the point that the patterns are not you, okay? They're just a pattern, right? They're, you are not your patterns and your patterns are not you. So how do we, what's a metaphor for that? So in, on your computer, you have software. Let's say you have, have Outlook or, or, or a CRM. Well, your CRM is not your computer right? Your computer is your computer. Your CRM is your, is your software. That's your program. So think about yourself in the same way. When you, when you're beating yourself up, when you, when you're being hard on yourself, you are not those beliefs. You are not those patterns. Those patterns came from programming. Okay. So the way I approach coaching is a, there's nothing wrong with you. And B, you have the ability to completely repattern and rewire yourself. And you're going to want to do that for the rest of your life. It's not something you're going to do one time. Because as you learn more about yourself, as you go through the process of self-discovery, then there's always more to learn. And I've, I've been doing this all my life. I think since I was a toddler, I've been on this mission to understand what makes me tick. And the more I, I, I get to know me, the better I feel, the more my health increases, the younger I get, the, the greater friendships I have, my, my ability to be vulnerable and transparent with the people in my life escalates. And, and then I, it puts me into a higher level of receiving so that I can receive more 
with less effort, right? Because we're all worthy. We are all worthy of greatness. We are all worthy of everything and anything the universe has to offer just by being who we are. Because you being who you are, just being you, not where you live, not what you drive, not who you know, not what you wear, just you being you contributes to the entire makeup of the universe. You're part of that. You're a vibratory being, you vibrate, you have energy, you are energy. You create energy through your thoughts, through your feelings, through your spiritual maturity, right? And then you take that into your business and now suddenly your business starts to scale because you're in a place of alignment and you're in a space of receiving. Hey, Star Girl, thanks for joining me. Hey, Robbie. Anze, I hope I pronounced that right. Anze, Anze, yeah, I think that's good. If it's not, tell me, okay? So um, these are where the patterns come from and you are not your patterns. So it's a simple decision that you're going to create new patterns. How do you create new patterns? Well, we know that a new habit, a new pattern is created through repetition. So three times, seven times, 21 times. And I like to do this out loud. And I also like to do it with activity. So, um, and with mirrors, you know, look in the mirror and have a conversation with yourself. When's the last time you looked in the mirror, looked into your own eyes and said, hey, I love you. I love you. When's the last time you did that? You should be doing that every day because you're the closest relationship that you're going to have with anybody on this entire planet. And if that's not right, then none of them are right. You're going to be running at a deficit. It's like a car running on a low gas gauge, right? It's scary. It's scary. No wonder there's so much fear and doubt and lack and loss in the world because it comes from this void inside of you that you're not filling with your own self-love. And then whatever relationship you have to your creator, whatever word you use to describe that, I'm not going to get into any you know, religious definement, is up to you. And you cultivate that and you foster that and you grow that and you give that your attention. Um, so yeah, I know Kiko, I think I might've taught that to you. So isn't that cool? I'm so grateful to have you in my life again. So, all right, so we know where the patterns came from and it's nobody's fault, by the way. You know, when you think of <clears throat> broke people trying to raise children, and I don't mean broke financially, I mean broke emotionally or broke spiritually because they came from an environment that didn't have the tools either. You know, I want to tell you, when I bought my first personal development book, which was um, Louise Hay, written by Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life, I had to actually go to a bookstore and physically stand there while they ordered it. And they had to phone it in. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, because it just, it just wasn't something that was on the shelves. And it turned my world around. I was like, oh my God. You mean the world is actually loving and kind and generous of spirit? Like I had no idea because I did not grow up with that program. Okay. I did not grow up with that program. And I made a conscious decision to rewrite history and to create my own program. So I'm sharing with you my own program, basically how I did it. So I recreate myself every single day. And um, so when I get up in the morning, I go through my process. I talk to myself in the mirror. I talk to myself out loud. And my favorite saying is, all of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. And I say that 10 times out loud. I also, when I'm in the gym, if, if some worry pops up or um, something I'm concerned about, not working, you know, going, going into that negative self-talk, I just counter it out loud. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be, you know, doing bicep curls or squats or lunges or something. And I'm just like, every rep, all of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. 
it's powerful because what it does is it invites in the positive energy. You know, it's just like, it's an affirmation that we do live in a loving universe and all we have to do is invite that love in to join us. Now, um, so 3721 and that's how we create new patterns. We do it through talking to ourselves. We do it through, um, so visualization is a really hot topic. And, um, you know, vision boards and all that stuff. And look, I'm down for all of it. Like it all adds up, okay? There's nothing wrong with any of it. It's just that some of it, it can be throttled up more quickly and more intensely. So the, the, the fastest throttle, the fastest acceleration is through feeling. You really take the time to get into the feeling of something. Because when you can get into the feeling of something, then you, that's the vibration. So that, and then the vibration, so, so physically in our brain syndicate, which is in our skull, our pineal gland, pituitary gland, hypothalamus, all of that, um, that, uh, the hippocampus, that brain syndicate is like um, an antenna. It's like a beacon. And it, it literally, scientifically, I'm not making this up, this is not a Deborahism, okay? Scientifically, this is actual, actually a functionality of the brain. It, act, it sends an antenna of, it's like a vibratory antenna, and, and it actually grows into connecting to energy in the universe, the quantum field, the, the plasticity, the malleability the, 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 of the plastic nature of, of the, of the universe, of the quantum field, of the unseen, formless substance. And by the way, a really good book is Wallace D. Wattles, The Science of Getting Rich. Okay, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Wattles. Hey, Michael um, and Mayasuki, thank you for joining us. So we have this brain frequency, this, this antenna that connects and whatever you're sending in terms of your thought process, your feeling, how you're feeling, your feelings never lie. You know, it's, it's like the universe picks up on your feelings, not what you're saying. Have you ever been at a party and someone, you're talking to someone and they say something and you know that what they're saying, they're really not connected to? It's just words. Well, that's how it works with the universe. So the universe isn't listening to your words. And that's why affirmations have such short legs, you know, because it's not the words you're saying. Hey, Tim Hill, it's the energy you're emitting. You can't lie in your energy. And for those of you that can see energy and can read energy and see auras and and you pick up on energy, you know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? So we've got this patterning process, 3721. Now your decision to make is that the way you're gonna get past your negative self-talk is you're gonna start talking to yourself in a loving, positive way. Just like you would a little toddler that's learning how to walk. Hey, Mark Elliott. You know, if, if you had a, a year old child in your home and they're graduating from the crawling stage to the walking stage and they fell down or they toppled over or they missed a step, you're not gonna browbeat them and give them all, tell them they're idiots and fools and losers. And I was in the gym one time and, and this gal came in and she was unpacking her gym bag and she realized she forgot something. And she was like, oh my God, I'm such an idiot. And I, I, don't, I didn't even know this girl. And I'm like, oh, wow, don't say that. And she's like, what? She didn't even know she said it because it was such a pattern for her. So do you think that little girl was told she was an idiot at some point in her life and she bought into it? Patterns are just things that we buy into and we can choose not to buy into them. So, hey, Baumi, nice to meet you. Now, the cool thing is, Okay, here's where the switcheroo comes up. 
I've been talking a lot about letting go of negative patterns and all of this works. So it's not an either or, it's an and. So the number one, number one, number one way to get rid of negative thinking is to think positive. That's it. So before it creeps in, before the doubt creeps in, before the, the anger, the resentment, the thoughts of lack, you have to train yourself to only look at what you're creating. And here's how I know how powerful that is. So one time I was in London, this is a long time ago, like six, seven years ago. And um, I have a favorite gym in London. I usually stay in Chelsea, Chelsea or Fulham, you know, I kind of vacillate or, or Mayfair kind of vacillate between the three areas. And um, so I have a favorite gym, they have multi locations. So I'm in my, I'm in the gym, it's like 5.30 in the morning, I've got a big meeting that day. And kind of weird, because I never read the news, but I grabbed a newspaper and I put it on the treadmill and I was flipping through it. And here was this interview, this journalist was interviewing this professional race car driver. And he was um, saying to him, wow, you really have been winning every race. How do you do it? And the race car driver didn't even realize he was giving away his winning strategy. And he said, well, um, it's pretty simple actually. I just see myself crossing the finish line first and then I drive the car. That's it. It's pretty simple. Like to him, it was like a no brainer. And I was reading that article and I was thinking, oh my gosh, this guy has a two step strategy One's internal and one's tactile. So he sees himself crossing the finish line first, right? So that's an internal process. That's a visual internal process. Hey, John. And then he drives the car. That's a tactile process. Two steps to his strategy. He didn't say, you know, I see myself crossing the finish line somewhere in the top three. And then I get in my car and when I'm driving, I worry, I doubt, I second guess myself. He doesn't, he didn't say any of that at all. So this is really the key is, is you get into this place where you, I, I reverse engineer when I'm working with a company, I reverse engineer every process. So you always begin with the end in mind and then you back it out and you build out the baby steps. Okay. And you chunk it down into measurable steps that then you connect key activities to and you dedicate a human being to the activities with an accountability construct and metrics that you can then measure the outcomes and you can identify your ROI and you can tweak it and make it better along the way. And that's, that's, you know, taking any objective, any desired outcome, any set of goals, quarterly, semi-annually, annually, it's, it's my process. So it's, it's there I gave you my secret sauce. Um, and then within that has to come the mindset. You have got to match the mindset. It's, you know, every business success is 20% mindset and eight, and, and sorry, 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 cancel. 20% strategy and 20% uh, strategy and 80% mindset. So what happened with me there is I've got this visual thing going on and I'm seeing it because I just finished mapping this out and I'm looking at the map and I'm talking at the same time and I reversed it because I said reverse engineer. So then I reverse engineered it. So you got to be careful what you say because it actually manifests in dialogue. Um, so that's it guys that's it you know the way to get past your negative thinking is to think positive positive. and yeah yeah for some of us that can be really tough because if you've got a lot of bandwidth built up on negativity on fear on doubt and then let's say you're in an environment where you have friends that, that feed that back to you or you're watching programming online or listening to the news or talking to um, 
you know, your parents or whoever it is that is continuing to anchor in um, the lack, the limitation and the negativity, then you're just going to get more of the same because it all connects. There's no, there's no separation between who you're being and what you're creating. There is no separation between who, the relationship you have with yourself and the relationship you have with your spouse or your pals. And, you know, I did couples coaching for 10 years, you guys, 10 years. And I think I've had my fill, which is why I quit offering that service of people coming into my office and blaming the other person for what wasn't working in their lives. And then even talking negatively to their friends about their spouse, like, please don't do that. And don't talk negatively about your team. Don't talk negatively about your boss or your business partner because they're a reflection of you. And you're just putting yourself down. You're making yourself look bad because you chose to have them in your life. So um, look, I could go on and on because I've been doing this for so long and I have just so much data and information, but it's been 31 minutes and so I'm gonna say goodbye. But one thing I wanna share with you um, is to definitely go to nei-mind.com. Uh, maybe someone could type this into the chat. Just uh, go to, maybe Eric, you could do that. Maybe type into the chat, nei-mind.com. It's our upcoming Business Accelerator Bootcamp. It's in Los Angeles on the 20th and 21st of September. I'm facilitating it. I have an amazing marketing team coming in to teach you everything you need to know. And it's not building or buying 15 or $20,000 sales funnels either. Guys, I have done that. You don't need to be spending that kind of money to be getting the results in your business. Okay. So I'm going to, I have done, I mean, I've done it all and I've learned the hard way. Um, <laughs> the school of hard knocks always gives you the absolute best point of reference. So yeah, go to business accelerator bootcamp uh, at NEI hyphen mind.com. Did you get that in the chat, Eric? I'd love to, to see that pop up in the thread. Um, maybe I can help you with that. Let me grab my keyboard before I say good night to you guys. So, there you go. And um, all the information is there. I'm gonna be doing a really special dinner, a VIP dinner on the 20th. And it's gonna be at a beautiful restaurant, beautiful food. And I'm going to teach you how to heal and shift your money story. So whatever limiting beliefs you have around receiving money and the flow of money and any beliefs you have around what you think you have to do to get money and to keep money. And we're going to go through that process. I'm going to teach you the tools behind that and how to actually delete, destroy, and uncreate all of those old programs that are keeping you stuck, as well as giving you the pragmatic tools and all the coaching and training to scale your business. So you're going to finish 2018 like super strong, and you're going to walk into 2019 rocking it out and hitting the numbers that you always wanted to hit. So thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here. And I will see you tomorrow. I've got another great topic for you. Actually, it's kind of a tie between two, so I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're just going to have to jump back on here. And let me know what is a good time, because I'm, I'm really looking at, like, when, when do you want me to do this show? And if you tell me, you can PM me, you can put it on my wall, tell me what's good for you. I'm looking for the time that suits everyone the best so we can get everybody on here and... Uh, and we can, I can share with you a bunch more of my tools. So thank you. Love you. Have a great evening. Ciao.